Howling 6, The Freaks, is a 1991 horror sequel directed by Hope Perello and starring Brendan Hughes, Michelle Matheson, Sean Sullivan, Jared Barclay, Bruce Payne, Carlos Cervantes, Deep Roy, and Antonio Fargas. The film opens with a woman running away. And she's dead. Oh look, scrapbooking. Let's randomly disappear and reappear in the desert. Ian enters the town of Canton Bluff where he encounters the locals bullshitting each other. Then the fuzz notices Ian and starts harassing him. What kind of accent you got? It's British. British? <laughs> you mean like they got there in England? Ian makes a deal with Dewey that in exchange for a little day work he can have a bed in the attic of the church Dewey is restoring. Ooh, freaks. Ian meets Dewey's daughter Lizzie and it's a home improvement montage. Let's do this. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Is that more Tang? I'm starting to think Tang may be the official drink of the Howling series, next to human blood. The film montages some more and you have a church. There goes the neighborhood. The locals are friendly this time, offering to buy Ian a beer. By any chance you registered yet to vote, Mr. Richards? No, I'm sorry. Man can buy his own beer then. Well, that was a very Illinois thing to do. They still tried to get Ian to go to the bar, but he denies their request. I really hope there's an entry for a kager with squee on that calendar. It's Harker's World of Wonders with Antonio Fargus! And Deep Roy! It's draft day with Harker selecting Winston for the role of another freak in the wall. Winston accepts the cell and joins the show as Ian purves away. Wow, you're talented at choking. Then the whole damn town turns out for Harker's Bazaar. She's fucked. Ian is there with Lizzie and he wins her a bear. I'm sure love will be professed in a few hours. Elsewhere, Winston is given a gimmick they doesn't care for. I don't want to look like this. But you look magnificent. I'm not quite sure about that. Here's some overacting. Long after we're dead, they'll still be telling stories of the amazing alligator. That son of a bitch can sell ice to an Eskimo. Ian and Lizzie walk into the freak show and holy shit! Oh, thank God, an exit. Nope, you're trapped. You were just cock blocked by canned laughter. Oh, it's probably just a gift shop. Nope, it's the overachiever freak room with Harker stopping in. Without people like me, what would it become of these poor, unfortunate souls? But you're exploiting them for profit. Please, allow me to be your guide. Oh, please don't. Hey, it looks like Tombs is well armed. This is your typical half-man, half-woman named Carl or Carlotta. Whoa, that's different. And Antonio Fargus as a fucking mime. Holy shit! Then these prudes get disgusted and leave. But it doesn't matter, because he already got your money. Harker has a lingering suspicion about Ian and then courts the banker that we figure will be dead by the end of Act 1. That night, Lizzie visits Ian's room and they get it on. Hey, wait. Turn the brightness down. Don't. Lizzie, please. Denied. I am so shocked that the bank that woman ran didn't open this morning. Here's a weird scene about Ian leaving. Well, I'll, um, get you when she... Shows up. <clears throat> we 
We are 40 minutes in and have not heard nor seen a damn thing about werewolves. Night falls and Huggy Bear is checking things out for Starsky and Hutch. Oh shit, I think we finally got our werewolf angle. To be fair, I'm pretty sure we figured Ian was going to end up being a werewolf. Wow, that's some pretty nice effects work. That's not so nice though. Dewey comes into the room and Ian has fled out to the street, roaming around. Meanwhile, Bellamy reports what he saw to Harker. Ian heads back to the church and runs into Harker, then tries to flee. Jesus! Then they proceed to kidnap him. That's the same look on your face when you find out the love of your life, writes Twilight Fan Fiction. And he's locked up and shows his gratitude to Harker. Harker says he knows that they've met before and offers his help in living in the world as a freak of nature. Especially after what you did to that sweet girl. What girl? I believe her name was Elizabeth. You tore her limb from limb before we were able to bring you down. That's not good dating technique. But it's probably bullshit though. Has the sheriff been standing outside the bank for 24 hours? How blind can I be not to be able to tell the difference between the face of God and the face of the devil? He isn't the devil. See, it was bullshit. The sheriff goes to investigate the kidnapping and it looks like Ian's new co-workers are abusing him. And Ian learns that Lizzie is still alive. Elizabeth. That Harker's been keeping it. Elizabeth! Lizzie! Thanks for keeping that plot point going for about three minutes. I mean, what was the point of telling him that she was dead anyway, for him to immediately find out she's still alive? And the sheriff goes to speak to Harker, but he has gone somewhere. You tell Mr. Harker I'll be here tomorrow. You know, Ian is actually a person, so I'm pretty sure you can make them let him out of the cage without talking to his kidnapper. A clue! You think Mr. Harker will let me keep this cat? Oh no. It's a big opening night for their new attraction. Harker just bribed the town to let a little kidnapping slide. No one has ever seen a werewolf and lived. Just a reminder that this is the sixth film in a franchise about werewolves. And to remind you that in the first film, a woman turns into a werewolf on television. Harker chants and here's your transformation. Ian is going to go through a lot of suits. There may be some among you who may wish to turn away. Oh no, come on. But Ian shows some self-control and returns the cat to Winston. The show is over. Is the movie over, please? The sheriff checks into Ian's things and finds a connection to the carnival and missing persons. He then heads back to the carnival, jumping into a dumpster and it's the dead banker. I'm actually impressed that he drove all the way to the carnival and instinctively just dumpster dove to find a corpse. It's almost like it was written for him. Poorly. Whoops, you're busted. It's not a werewolf movie without a full boom mic. And he's dead. We're closed. They get the door open and they find out what the special is. Back at the carnival, Bellamy is giving Ian a Facebook poke. This is what I do to friends and freak. <laughs> they killed the cat? Oh, God, that image is never leaving my head. 
Then Ian escapes because Barnaby dropped his pet roach. Ian! Convenient! Oh look, a lynch mob! Lizzie and Ian head for a barn and is that the cat that was killed a few minutes ago? The mayor goes looking for Harker and it looks like he needs to clean under his furniture a little more often. <laughs> Holy shit! We then get some backstory on why Ian's after Harker. Harker was part of some strange cult. My father was obsessed with destroying them. I never understood why. Then they get it on. Oh, I gotta go, baby. I gotta get to work early. Dewey discovers the Harker intel, but gets knocked out, and Harker joins the big redneck mess. Ian leaves to find Harker, and hey, there he is. Harker commends that they shoot him, but everyone wimps out. Man, I hope my insurance covers that. Hey, everybody, he's a vampire. Let's all run away. Lizzie arrives, getting attacked by Deep Roy, and he's dead. I'll kill you. Probably with horrible acting. Dewey for the win! It's the final confrontation between Ian and Harker. It's looking bad until Winston drops the chant, and now we have ourselves an old-fashioned vampire werewolf death match. <laughs> Wow, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> and Harker turns to dust. Is he in there dropping a deuce or something? Ian leaves with Alligator Boy and I am left to wonder what happened to Antonio Fargus. At this point in the series, I might as well copy and paste my take from the previous five films. It's a stupid story with bad acting. All these films, except the original, are horrible. And Howling 6 continues that grand tradition. But at least there are actually actors in this one I've heard of. Once again, you really don't need to see this movie because it has nothing to do with the ones before and I'm pretty sure it's not going to have much to do with the ones after it. It's a pass.